Hello and welcome to night three of the 12 Days of Halloween 2019. Tonight, what starts as an ordinary friendship between two socially awkward teenage girls soon unearths dark secrets and a terrifying evil lurking in a Pacific Northwest suburb in The Worst is Yet to Come. That's the book I'm reviewing tonight. Hello everyone, Thomas here, your host as always. Thanks so much for joining me. Neil Gaiman has said that most horror fiction is a ghost train ride. You climb onto the ghost train, you go speeding through the dark forest, it's all very scary, but ultimately the train pulls back into the station and you get off. Things were hard, but in the end we're safe and sound, free to go back to the routine of our lives. But some horror doesn't let us do that. You don't get off the ghost train. Our heroes don't save the day. They don't escape the monster. No one is absolved of their deepest mortal sins. And if that's how you roll, if you like your horror bleak with a side helping of bleak, then S.B. Miskowski has a book for you. Even its title makes it clear right from the jump. This is one ghost train going right off the tracks. The Worst is Yet to Come is set in the fictive Seattle suburb of Skalut, which has also served as the setting for some of Miskowski's earlier stories. Tasha Davis is the introverted teenage daughter of a bougie liberal couple who moved away from Seattle, for reasons, only to find themselves alienated by their new, deeply conservative neighbors. But the town itself, despite its pretensions to class, is just another zombie suburb. Abandoned or unfinished homes and numerous empty lots speak to widespread failed development. One day at school, Tasha meets Briar, and the two girls become instant BFFs. Now this throws Tasha's mom, Kate, into a hyper-protective panic. Although Briar is unfailingly polite in their presence, there's something about the girl that's off-putting in a way Kate can't describe, but which Tasha's father, Charles, brushes off in typically smug paternal fashion as an overreaction. Taking this story as being principally about family dynamics and secrets, the worst is yet to come succeeds brilliantly when Miskowski is detailing the backstories of her characters and what motivates even their most inexplicable behaviors and life choices. And the book's title dangles over us constantly as a kind of Sword of Damocles, promising us that no matter how shocking the most recent revelation is, well... <laughs> The early years of Kate and Charles' marriage are laid out for us and we're immediately given a mystery to chew on. If Kate was so adamantly resistant to Charles' openly stated desire for kids, if her own sheer disinterest in children and motherhood was so pronounced, why is she now so desperately unwilling to let go of Tasha's childhood and accept that adolescence is inevitable and that a natural part of it involves Tasha pulling away from mom and dad and shaping her own personalities interests, and friends. Kate, as we slowly learn, has good reasons to be concerned about a lot of things. But Charles is infuriating. He's one of those always happy husbands who's so hopelessly besotted by his wife that he doesn't notice how he never actually listens to her and gaslights everything she says with vapid little reassurances. You know the thing. Every single worry that Kate expresses is countered with it will all be fine, or this is just a phase, or I'm sure you're worrying too much, you'll see. But what of Briar? I mean, where exactly has she sprung from? That she is the daughter of a single mom living in a trailer park with an irresponsible douchebag of a boyfriend is probably the sort of thing that might give most reasonably stable and affluent parents pause, but what no one sees are the two ghostly teenagers who carefully watch Briar's every move. And Briar isn't someone to rein in her impulses. When a boy in their class just won't stop sexually harassing Briar and Tasha, Briar does for him with a big shovel and buries him behind an empty house. And either he's just that much of a loser or there is some sinister influence at work, but he's never missed. And this, as it turns out, is only the first in a series of events that will reveal far more about these characters' lives than they want anyone to know. If the book has a flaw, it's a crucial one, in that there's a supernatural element that comes very much to the fore of the narrative in later chapters, but without either adequate setup or sufficient explanation once things are happening. We see the ghostly teens, there's some vague talk about witches, but it's all very sketchy. And then BAM! 
We're in the middle of Spooky Town. Perhaps there's a lot of lore about Skaloot, the way Stephen King built a lore around Castle Rock over years of stories that will make all of this feel more fleshed out to readers of Miskowski's earlier work. Or maybe there isn't. But in this story, the flaws are ably compensated by some imaginative and startling twists in the lives of the characters. A series of bad decisions, inadequately justified, that have led them all to an inescapable reckoning. And the worst is yet to come. And there you have it, everybody. That's all I have time for on tonight's episode of SFF 180. Remember, most important thing, these are reviews. You will not always agree with me, but if you enjoyed watching, please hit that like button, share the video far and wide with all of your SFF reading friends, and above all, please subscribe. If you haven't yet done so, that's how the channel grows. You can also support the channel at my Tee Public store and at my Patreon, where recruits into Wink's Army get little perks like getting to see some of my videos early. I want to thank all of those wonderful people for their additional support. It is extremely helpful and much appreciated. I want to thank all the rest of you for being the very best viewers in all of BookTube, and until I see you all for the next installment of the 12 Days of Halloween, spooky reading. Spooky reading.